I bet today's project is on your home improvement list, garage makeover. If you want your garage to go from looking like this to looking like this, then don't go away because I'm going to share with you how I turned my garage nightmare into a dream garage. It's all coming up next right here on For Your Home. Even empty, my garage is still a nightmare. Take a look at this place. It's in horrible shape. You know, after spending a year to renovate my house, I just really didn't have the heart to tackle this garage or the budget. But now, a year later, I've got the nerve to do it, and I'm ready to get started. When you get ready to do your garage makeover, the first thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get rid of a lot of your junk. You have to sort through everything and decide what is it that your family needs to keep and what can you get rid of. This is the perfect opportunity to be really philanthropic with some of your belongings. Think about Habitat for Humanity, for building materials. Think about your local church or Purple Heart Home Builders. Think about ways that your junk can really help out other people. Now, I've got a great table right back here. I'm waiting for the church to pick that up for the crafting room. The next thing you're gonna to have to do is find a place to put all of the things that you wanna keep. You can call and order one of those storage units that they'll deliver right to your property and you can load it up. And if you don't have room to keep it there, they'll haul it off and bring it back when you're ready for it. Or you can be creative like I was. I have a lovely senior neighbor of mine a couple of doors down. She doesn't use her garage. I'm renting it for a month while I do my garage. She's getting a little extra spending money and I've got my stuff close at hand. The next step in your garage improvement project is to create zones. And what do I mean by zones? I mean, how does your family use the things that you've decided to keep? As simple as that. I used my computer and my printer to make myself some little signs to indicate my different zone areas. For example, love to shop at those warehouses and you get those big bulk supplies. Well, you don't have room for them in your house, so I'm going to create a drop zone right here. That's where I'm gonna store picnic supplies, those extra bulk items, and some of the party supplies. Now, home improvement. You knew that Vicki would have to have a home improvement section in her garage. It's gonna be right here. Have a nice workbench I'd like to have. I've got electrical outlets, so that makes that really perfect. Grab some more of these little pens. Sports, I don't work all the time. There are some sports I like to play, like golf and pitch a baseball around a little bit. So, for that area, Let's put it right back here in the corner. Now, I also have a lot of hobbies, so I need to keep a storage area for those spaces. Decide what kind of hobbies is it you're going to store in the garage. Maybe crafting, glassworking like myself, a little bit of woodworking maybe, and gardening. Now, you guys all know that I love to garden, so I decided that gardening would be a good spot right down here close to the door. That way, you know, you can run right in from the yard, grab what you need, take it back out without tromping all around through the garage. I also have my sprinkling system and things down here. Just keep it organized. Don't forget, though, garbage cans. You're gonna probably going to keep them in your garage or your recycling bins. Go ahead and put those into your major plan as you go along. Once you've decided all your zones and where you want your things to go, then it's time to call your general contractor or your home improvement expert and have them come and give you a hand in deciding what kind of storage that you actually need to have. Open shelf, closed cabinets, workbenches. They'll know exactly what you need to handle all of your stuff. This is the perfect time to take care of all of those other kind of home improvement needs that your garage has. Like for example, drywall repair. Take a look at that hole back there. That happened when they took the old shelves down. Time to fix that, all the tape that's coming off, get it painted, maybe install a pull downstairs to your attic. When your garage is empty, it's a great work area. Now, it's also a great time to address the floor of your garage. This is Alan Privet. Hey, Alan, how you doing? Good, Vicki. He, he is with Best in Show Garage, and I'll tell you, his work speaks for himself. It always looks beautiful when you're done. I can't wait to see what you do with this nasty old floor. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got uh, a lot of different colors for you to choose from. I mean, we could do custom colors, but uh, you've seen a few of the special yeah. blends that we have. Well, you know, the thing that I want to make sure is that 
this isn't like paint, right? It's no. not going to wear off. No, it is not. Okay. Uh, we start by, uh, we, we, we prep the floor. That's the biggest reason why floors fail is that uh, improper prep of the floor. So we. Yeah, because there's all this grease and dirt grease for 30 and years and on the floor. Grime and paint. Yeah. Uh, so we do a, a mechanical grind using a diamond grinder. Okay. Um, we go over the entire floor edges. So is it like little uh, little diamond wheels uh, or something? Yeah, well, it's a little diamond oh, disc. Wow. So it's just uh, metal infused diamonds. Okay. Um, we take care of any cracks, you know, we pre fill those and um, make sure they survive well uh, before we start with the, the primer coat, which is a moisture vapor emissions barrier. Okay, so when that goes down, is that a water base, epoxy? What is it? No, it's, uh, it's a two part. 100% solids epoxy, and it goes down. Um, you know, after we've cleaned the floor and completely got up all the grime, uh, it goes down. Right after that, we put on the flakes. Okay, so you put that down, and these little flakes go on. How do you get these flakes on it? Oh, uh, we just broadcast them by hand. It's like sowing seeds, huh? Sowing seeds, feeding chickens. So I'm guessing. Since you have so many choices here that I get to choose what kind I want for my garage. That's correct. They're all custom. They're all custom. Well, we're doing everything in here is gray and mm -hmm. black cabinetry, and we're going to do the walls, paint them a nice gray. So I'm assuming that something you know like these would work best for me, and I don't want it to be really busy. I mean, like some of these are pretty busy, yes. and I'm kind of a Very little bold. more subtle than that. So I would say probably something like this mm -hmm. will will go best with my garage. How long does this whole process take? Uh, a garage this size will take us about one day start to finish with uh, return to foot traffic the following morning, you know, maybe within 12 hours or so. Okay, so the process now that I've got the garage all cleared out mm -hmm. is to get Carlos in here and he's going to fix all these drywall problems and repaint everything and then your guys can come in mm -hmm. and do theirs yeah. and then we'll be able to get the uh, organization uh, folks in here to start putting in all those great storage units. Right. Yeah. yeah, well I'm excited about this because I know it makes a big difference of keeping your house clean inside when your garage has a floor like this. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you one more question though, maintenance for this. Mm -hmm. Very little. You can hose it out, uh, oil and grease spill on it, you can wipe it right up. It doesn't soak back into it. does not permeate. Whew, you are yep. my man, Alan. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this turns out. Thank you so much. You to get everything in this garage working exactly the way I want it. And you should do the same thing at your house. Fix it all and make it permanent. Now, this is Sean, and Sean is from Roby Electric. Hey, Sean, how are you doing today? Hi, Vicki. I am well. Thanks for having us Good. Out. Well, Sean is a great electrician, and he's here today to help me get all my elect electrical issues solved. Sean, you see all the big boxes here, right? I see them. Yes, okay. ma'am. All right. So, Here's what I want. I want to replace these lights in the ceiling, these old-fashioned ones, with sure. bigger fluorescent ones. That's yeah. a common thing for the garage area. It's a, it's a dark space, and the fluorescence really adds some functional lighting. Yeah, plus these look like screaming 1950, 1970. You know? Is that when you got them? Yeah, I think that's where they are. OK, so this one, I guess we're going to run them, what, this way? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. The long ways is, is just going to give greater light okay. output. So. Okay. That'll be the best case. All right. So that's going to take care of that issue that I have. The other is I've always wanted to have carriage lights on the outside of the garage. Sure. Didn't install them when I did the house, but I did order the matching ones so they match everything. Here. There's no electricity out there, though. So what's that going to entail? Uh, it definitely takes a little more work to come uh -huh. in post construction. Um, we're going to basically have to hammer drill and cut in a box um, to put our junctions in. Uh -huh. And we'll just need to know height and where exactly you want those lights placed. Okay. And okay. then also, um, switch-wise, do you want them on with the floodlights, or would you like them on their own switch, a okay. timer switch, well, a couple different options. Well, you know, I want them to be uh, decorative and for security. So I want to be able to have, you know, turn them off and on from inside the house. Okay. And I'm not really crazy about the floodlights on the corner of the house because they're more, I don't know, maybe too old-fashioned, too sure. bright, you know? More for security. Yeah, yeah. And so th those I don't really need. So I'm going to use these, though, from that security standpoint. And I'd like them. Is there a way we can set them up so they'd be like on a timer? Absolutely. Um, okay. That'd probably be the, the best option here as well because your home is separated from the garage a little bit 
detached. Uh -huh. um, so we to use the wiring that's already existing throughout the garage is going to be the best option. Okay. And we can put in an intermatic switch that will allow you to control. You can have it on the same time, seven days a week, or tailor it to each day coming on and off at a different time. Oh, okay. So just like your sprinkling system or something would go on. Exactly. Okay. Well, great, because I'd like to kind of tie it in, too, like with my landscape lighting and also that when I'm coming home late at night, the lights are already on, and then they'll go off at a certain time. Okay, we So that'd be that. great. All right, the next issue is we only have, I've only got two wall outlets here, sure. and I need more electricity in this garage. Okay. Um, we can certainly tap off of the existing circuit uh -huh. that's out here and install um, separate outlets on that same circuit. Uh, we would just need to know, again, what location would work best? Are you having workbenches put in? What's, uh, what's a good placement for you? Well, I am going to have storage system put in here. Okay. And uh, there is going to be a worktop in one area. So if I get the blueprint for that, I can show you where that, that's all going to lay out. And then that'll kind of help determine where the wall place is going to go. That would be great. That, okay. That's perfect. Any kind of plans or settings that we can see um, really helps us to pinpoint a location. Okay, great. And this is pretty handy too that we have the stairs in here, huh? Very for, handy. For you yes. guys to run upstairs to, to the attic. Electrician stream, crawl space and attic space. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm going to go get those plans so that you can see exactly the location of the workbench and where you're going to put everything and let you and David get back to your job. Thanks okay? so much, Vicki. Thanks. You know, the whole idea of doing this garage makeover was to get some sort of a system in here so I could growl all of my junk. This is Terry, he's my handyman and I have had him working with me on this project. How do you think we're doing so far? Really great. You think so? Mm -hmm. Well, you got a lot of boxes and you said you still have a truckload more down the line. Oh yeah, I mean, you've got a pretty good system going here. I know, I can tell that. Okay, how hard is it gonna be to install this? Real simple. Um, I've already checked out all your zones. I've already pre-marked my studs, so all we need to do is get the brackets mounted and get going. Yeah, because this thing is all works off of like a rail, right? Right. Yeah. So this thing right here, what are you going to do with these? Because okay. you've got a whole stack of those over there. This is my horizontal rail. It'll go attached to the studs. Uh-huh. And then a vertical railing. Oops. We'll just hook into it. Oh, just hang like that. And hang like that. Now do you have to attach this to the wall too? Yes, at the lower end. Okay. All right, so great. So that's going to go all the way around the perimeter of it. And then um, I picked out a lot of different kind of storage options that you gave me of like different baskets and hangers and different kinds of things. And I tried to do a really good job on picking out where I was going to put all my different zones. But if I made mistakes or I need more space for one than the other, how flexible is the system going to be? Extremely flexible. In fact, you can do it yourself. Oh, yeah? These are all measured out 30 inches, and each piece is 30 inches. So you can raise and lower them switch them around as you need. Okay, so they just hook inside of these little slots? Yes. Okay, so that if I want to move a shelf around, you say I can do this without you, and I believe well, I can. Actually, you got it upside down. See, I can't <laughs> do it without you, see? Aha. And if we want to move it down? Pop it out and go. Pretty cool, mm -hmm. pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to let you get to work and get all of that done and get your, your bars up and your rails and everything hanging and then I'm going to have the fauna coming in and hanging all the little baskets right. and filling them up with all my junk. All right? Let's get started. All right. You get going and uh, I'll start corralling my junk. <laughs> Terry got busy measuring and installing the horizontal header rail. The system is designed to allow all the vertical rails to be suspended from this one horizontal rail. This makes the installation go quick and very efficient. Shelving, cabinets, and a work surface will hang from the vertical rails. Once all the rails were in place, Terry could move on to installing the metal grid system, which will be used to hang various organizational containers, hooks, and more shelving. All of the shelves, the cabinets, and the containers will be switched out and repositioned without tools and hardware, which makes it really great for me because I may change my mind. It feels like a brand new house. You know, that way it smells, it's all new, it's clean. It's all, you know, just waiting for me to bring my stuff in. In fact, I got so excited that I've already started putting some of my things away. My gardening tools, of course. And it's gonna be so nice to get myself organized for a change. While the garage is being finished up, I took advantage to do a little bit of uh, housekeeping myself. This is my garden wagon. It used to belong to my granddaughter, Logan. I commandeered it after she outgrew it, and now it's my garden wagon. Well, the inside had rusted, so 
I took the opportunity to put some fresh paint on it and clean it up. I couldn't put a dirty wagon into this beautiful new garage, right? So all across my, this side, I've got my garden tools hanging and my different chemicals and things I need. The cubby's going to work out great for me to put my gardening shoes in, extra trowels, whatever I want to just tuck away. Um, I'm so glad that we went the distance and had electricity changed here in the garage. This is one of the new plugs we had put in. And this is super handy because, think about this if you're doing your garage, I have a leaf blower, I need a place to put my charger. So having it over here, I'm not running across the garage, and I can always find it. I love how everything's coming together. I can't wait to get started on my tools. Hey, hey Sean, how you doing? Doing well, how are you? Oh, I'm having lots of fun. I'm starting to bring down all the things from the storage unit down to put back into the garage, because what do you think? Oh my gosh, Night Big change, it isn't great. it? Big Absolutely change. Now you're going to want to win these garages, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting on this this weekend so <laughs> you know I really want to thank you guys for helping me out with electricity it really makes a world of difference and I see that you've got this switch in here but I don't know how to operate it so well, tell, me, to teach you. tell uh -huh. me what to do first off these these two top buttons here they override that switch or uh -huh. the um, the lights completely okay so whatever the timer set at you can always press this to either turn them on or turn them off okay to your uh, to your liking Basically, you go down here to program. Right. It'll show up all the days on the bottom of the, the timer switch here. And you just set your hour and minute like you would a clock. And um, you can also set it to if you want it to go off later on the weekends, um, if you're entertaining guests or something, you can program it so that Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I need to set it like Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursday, th through the whole thing. I can set them each individually different? Exactly. Yep. Okay. Or just all one. So. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, I think that's going to be a great safety feature for me, you know, with the coach lights out front like that. Plus, it's aesthetically, it's a really great look. So I appreciate it. Great. And all these great lights in here, I can do some hobbies and crafts in here. I can see what you're doing, too. I can yeah. see it. So thank you guys a lot. I really appreciate it. Thank Thanks, you. Sean. Appreciate working with you. One of the best ways to get organized is to have the tools to get you there. No matter what kind of a garage you have, I bet somewhere in there there's a bunch of balls for soccer. Maybe you have bicycles for your kids or yourself. Perhaps you're a tennis player. For me, I'm a golfer. So to get and organize my golfing equipment, it was really fun to put it all into one place. And this is an organizer that made it really handy to do. I can hang my clubs right here. And if you have a partner, there's room to hang two sets of golf clubs. I could get my golf shoes right here, a place a basket to hold golf balls and tees and sun visors. So when I get a few extra minutes and I have the opportunity to play a round of golf, I can grab everything out of one place, throw it in the trunk of my car, and I'm ready for tea time. The outside of the garage looks so terrific with the new coach lights that I decided the old house numbers well, they just weren't keeping up. So it was a good time to change those out as well. I found these really cool house numbers in this dark bronze color. I thought they would look really nice out here. The first way we got started was to take some masking tape and tape off this section of the brick. Once we had the tape in place, then we could start laying out the numbers so that we could get them all lined up exactly in the right direction because each number is a little bit different. So once we had them out, we marked the locations of where the screws were going to go. All these numbers have these little pegs on the back, and all you do with these is you just screw them right into the back of the number like that. So in order to prepare the brick to take these, the holes were drilled, anchors were put in, then these go onto your letters. Then they have these great little sleeves that just pop on it like that because one of the cool things is that these numbers stand out from the house. And once you have those, then you're ready to start putting them up onto your house. Now, if you get busy and you forget what your house address is, you might want to write it down ahead of time. So mine happens to start with 3-6, so we're going to start there. You don't want to damage your number. So you might want to have a little piece of cardboard ready and a hammer. And I'm going to climb into my flower bed here. And I'm going to put this post into that hole just to get it started, just like that. And then, whoop, drop my hammer. Hang on. I got it. OK. Then I'm going to take the cardboard and put it right over the top of this like that and tap it. A little at the top, a little at the bottom. And I just want to keep driving it down until these little pegs are flush with the brick. 
Okay, feel that going in there. All right, I got three started over here. Go back, put it in. And I'm just gonna work my way down, putting each number in to the brick the same way. Perfect. Now you have to agree, don't you, that these new house numbers are really so much better looking than the old numbers. No matter how beautiful your garage looks, you may not want people to be able to see inside. It's not really safe for people to be able to see what you're storing, you know, your golf clubs, your car, whether you're at home or not. Well, just like we install coach lights outside to make it a safer garage, we're gonna do something now to make it safer by covering this window with some frosted paper. Now, I like getting all the light in, so I didn't want a solid door, so this is a quick and easy solution. You can find this paper film at any of your home improvement stores. Um, it's just, uh, you know, sticky on one side. And I want to give you some tips for doing this. First of all, don't peel off all the back of it and then try to come up here with a big piece of like fly paper and stick it up because it's going to be too hard to do. Next thing is, don't trim it ahead of time. Make sure that it's big enough to overlap a little on the edges. If you trim it ahead of time and then you get it the least bit off, you're out of luck. So I'm only going to worry about lining up one side of this paper at a time. So I'm going to go up here, get your glass nice and clean first. I'm going to let it be a little longer than I really need it to be. And I'm going to start with this lined up right along this one edge, just like that. Get it going there. And then you want to reach back up underneath here. I'll be the trickiest part and start to pull off this backing on the paper. All right, pull that down. Don't worry about the top. We're going to come back and get that in a minute. And then just keep working it down all the way along until you have this side all the way down. Then you can come back and pull off more of the paper and work right on across the top. Once you have it all smoothed down exactly the way you want it, we want to trim off the excess that we have across the bottom and up this side or anywhere else. So you want to take your tool that you're working with and sort of crease it across the bottom kind of to give you a start to it. Then using a X-Acto knife, this is the big secret, when you're using these don't use an old blade, get a brand new blade and put in this. And we're just going to come along here where it is and put the blade in and let the blade just ride right along the edge of that molding right against the glass and right by the edge of the molding it'll help you do a nice straight line just come right on along the edge keep that nice and tight go back if you need to cut a little deeper somewhere just take your knife there again Peel that off. See what a nice little edge that does for us? Touch that up right there. And then coming back here, seal it down again. Go along the molding. Just like that. Okay. And then with your tool, you can come back in and burnish it down nice and tight again. Do the same on any of the sides that have any hangover. Go back. Clean it up, and now you have a nice secure door, but plenty of light for your garage. Now this is a garage I could come home to every day of the week. It turned out absolutely awesome. No more garage nightmare. You know, Alan did such a great job on this floor. It is so clean and it's so bright. I really love the way it turned out. Terry? awesome contractor really did a great job installing all the rails and all the shelving and all the cabinets and the electricians they were really right there for me and I'm so glad that we made all those changes and improved the lighting it makes it so much brighter in here and a lot more fun to work in the garage you know it looks so beautiful in here I just might have to throw a garage party here are just a few quick tips to follow while troubleshooting 
If your garage door isn't working, one step in troubleshooting includes checking the garage door opener to make sure it's working properly. As a first and often very obvious step, check the batteries in your remote operator. Make sure the batteries aren't corroded. If they need to be replaced, put fresh batteries into the remote. Another obvious tip for troubleshooting the garage door opener is to check the power source to make sure that a circuit breaker hasn't malfunctioned. Most modern garage door systems use photo-optic safety sensors to prevent the door from accidentally closing on people or property. The sensors project an invisible beam of light across the bottom of the door. If this beam is interrupted, the opener will not function. Make sure that there's nothing blocking this beam and that the electrical connections are nice and tight. Listen to your garage door as it opens and closes. If it creaks and makes noise, it probably needs a little bit of bolt tightening, screws tightened, and final steps, some lubricating of the travel mechanisms with a little simple three-in-one oil. Do you want to know more about the projects today or our guests? Visit us on the web. You're going to find great behind-the-scenes shots, streaming video, project ideas. We even have an e-newsletter with tips and ideas. It's foryourhome.com. I hope I've helped you rethink the way you use your garage and maybe inspired you to do a little organization around your house. Join me next time right here on For Your Home when I'll have more great ideas that you can use around your house. Yes. All right, thanks. I'm going to let you get to your work, and I'm going to go get those plans. For Thank you. you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> okay, open up. Sun visors. So when I get a few extra minutes and I can head out to the golf course, I can grab everything I need, throw it into my course, my course, my car. All right, here we go. That was good. That was good. All right, ready?